This is a regular pentagon. If you're someone who's made it past the second grade, then you probably already knew that. But did you know that we can create a pentagram by drawing some lines to connect each of the pentagon's vertices together? Okay, fine, maybe you did know that too. You know what? I have a better one for you. If we shade in the pentagram, which gives us a star, then how does the area of the pentagon compare to the area of the star? That is, what is the exact ratio of the areas of these respective shapes? On the surface, this question is a seemingly simple one, but as we'll soon find out, not only is the solution far from simple, but we'll also discover an unexpected property about these shapes that will help us solve the problem. Now, for those seeking a slightly easier version of this problem, try proving whether the area of the pentagon is more than twice, less than twice, or exactly twice the area of the star. And keep in mind that you can answer this without having to do any tedious calculations. Okay, here's your chance to pause the video, if you'd like to take the time to try the problem out for yourself before we go through it together. Okay, let's tackle the easier version of the problem first, which asks for us to roughly compare the areas of the two shapes. Let's begin by labeling some points here, with O marking the center of both the pentagon and the star. The first thing to notice is that the area of the star is just five times the area of the quadrilateral ACOD. And since the area of the pentagon is equal to the area of the star, plus five times the area of the triangle DAB, then all we really need to do is compare the areas of these two shapes. Let's take a look at the triangle DAB first. Before we do anything else, notice that connecting the interior vertices of the star in this way forms a mini upside down pentagon. And since the interior angles of a regular pentagon are 108 degrees each, then the angle ADB must also be 108 degrees. Now, by symmetry, the lines DA and DB are equal to each other, meaning the triangle DAB is isosceles, and so the angles DAB and DBA must both be 36 degrees. Alright, let's shift our focus to the triangle CDE now, which may seem like a strange next step, but bear with me for now. Using a similar argument, we can easily find the angles of this triangle as well. Now, let's extend our scope of interest and include the triangle ACD, which, again, we can easily obtain the angles of, given that it's also isosceles. Okay, great. What this shows is that the triangles DAB and ADE have the same exact angles, making them similar triangles. On top of that, they also share a common side, that being DA. So not only are they similar, but they're also congruent, meaning that they both have the same area as well. Now, you might be wondering what exactly this is supposed to accomplish. Well, notice that the point E is clearly further away from the line CD than the origin is. And so this tiny triangle, CDE, must have a greater area than the triangle CDO. And thus, the triangle ADE, which we just showed has the same area as DAB, must have a greater area than the quadrilateral ACOD. Finally, once we've put everything together, we can see that the area of the pentagon must be more than twice the area of the star. Okay, cool. Now we get to the fun part. Let's see if we can calculate the exact ratio between these two areas. And we might as well start off with the pentagon. As you can see, we're already faced with a problem here, since we don't have any dimensions to go off of to help us determine the pentagon's area. But luckily for us, ratios of areas stay proportional, and so we can assign our own dimension here as long as we stay consistent with it. So, for the sake of convenience, let's set the side length of the pentagon be one unit long. Using the formula for the area of a pentagon, which admittedly is an ugly one, we can obtain the area we're looking for without much trouble. Alright, that wasn't too bad. As for the area of the star, we might want to consider breaking it up into smaller pieces first. Once we figure out the areas of these shapes, we can just combine them together and be done with it. But, of course, that's easier said than done. Let's bring back the pentagon, given that it has a reference dimension that we can use. Now, let's see if we can find the length of this line, which we'll denote by x. Notice that knowing this length would help us figure out the length of the legs of the isosceles triangles and the side length of the smaller pentagon. Okay, now let's draw another line with length x to create an isosceles triangle with base length 1. We already know that this angle up here is 36 degrees, so the other two must be 72 degrees. Now, let's draw another line of length x connecting these two vertices. Notice that this creates another triangle, which is a subtriangle of the yellow one. And similarly, we know that this angle here must be 36 degrees, and so we can determine the rest of these angles without much trouble. And this is where things get interesting. We just created three different isosceles triangles. And what's something we know about isosceles triangles? Well, their legs must both be of the same length. So, since the leg of this triangle is one unit long, then this length must also be one unit long. And as a result, this length must also be one unit long. Thus, this length here must be x minus one. 
Okay, cool. Now, something else you might have noticed is that these two triangles share the same angle measurements, and so they must be similar triangles, which means that the ratio of their side lengths must be equal. Or, in other words, x over 1 must be equal to 1 over x minus 1. And after some simplifying, we get the following equation. This equation only has one positive real root, and that's 1 plus root 5 over 2. If this at all looks familiar to you, it's because you've probably seen it before, maybe as phi instead of x. Yep, this is exactly the formula for the golden ratio. Some of you might be surprised to see this pop up here, given that you might have been made aware of the golden ratio through the visualization of the Fibonacci sequence. But in reality, the golden ratio is deeply rooted in geometry, with mentions of this magical number dating all the way back to 300 BCE in Euclid's elements. Okay, let's get back on track before we get too carried away. We just showed that the length of this line is equal to phi, while the length of the base of this purple triangle is phi minus 1. Now, if we bring back our star, we can see that the legs of these triangles must have a length of phi minus 1, which means that the smaller pentagon must have a side length of 2 minus phi. Alright, great, we have two shapes and two equations to calculate their respective areas. But first, let's quickly find the height of the triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, we can finally plug in our values to get the areas of these shapes. And therefore, the area of the star can be calculated as follows. And this whole mess comes out to about 0.812. Now, for the last step, we just need to divide the area of the pentagon by the area of the star, and we'll get the ratio we're looking for, which comes out to, well, whatever this is. And just to put your mind at ease, this comes out to approximately 2.118. Alright, here's a similar question for you to think about. If we start off with a hexagon as opposed to a pentagon this time, and again, inscribe a star within it in a similar fashion, then what is the exact ratio between the area of the hexagon and the area of the star? I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, it really helps the channel out. And while you're at it, subscribe for the many more math puzzles coming very soon.